those transactions have completed. The only one that actually appeared at our Ronan wallet address was this one here. And all the others, even though they used the right address, were on the wrong chain and have not appeared in there at all. Likewise, there is nothing in MetaMask either. And it's normally at this point that people start to panic. Combine a whole bunch of people coming in and playing this game who've never had anything to do with crypto before with the standard, confusing, maybe even dangerous interface that we've come to expect from Binance. What could possibly go wrong? Turns out a lot. So I've been getting a ton of questions from people who've been playing the Axie Infinity games and who've done something like send Ethereum straight to their Ronin wallet address or maybe send uh, WETH or uh, AXS token or SLP or whatever directly to their MetaMask address and they don't know what to do to get those tokens back. So in this video, I'm just gonna run through uh, a few straightforward recoveries that look at how to recover from this instance where you have sent the funds to an address on the different chain. And they're essentially just an example of something I cover in this video here. And if you haven't already done so, hit subscribe and that way you can stay in the loop for content I make to help you find your way in the crazy and often hostile environment that is cryptocurrency. So basically, I'm just gonna run through a couple of examples and uh, if you're only interested in one of them, you can find them in the navigation bar on the bottom of the video or in the description. All the examples in this video will work the same regardless of whether you're using a software wallet or if you're using a Trezor. And uh, just a reminder again, if you are using a Trezor, you do not need to go entering your seed into any of these wallets at any time. Your Trezor wallet can work directly with all of the wallet software required to do these recoveries securely. Now, the first thing we're gonna wanna do is actually use a separate browser than the one we have been using with our wallet. So over here on the right, I've got Firefox and that's where I have the uh, Ronin wallet as well as MetaMask that I sent these funds to. And rather than messing with your existing installation of these wallets, the simplest thing you can do is actually to open a different browser. So over here on the left, I've just got Chrome. And then to install the wallet extensions we are going to use for recovery in that second browser. So we'll just go to MetaMask's website, make sure it's the right one. So we'll add that to Chrome. We can say, get started. We can say, I already have a secret recovery phrase. We can acknowledge all those warnings. And then once we're up to this screen here, we can go over into Ronan wallet, click on the little person, click settings, and then we'll say view secret recovery phrase, the password. And we're gonna copy that here and paste that there. And we've got to set a wallet password. This password can be anything. It doesn't have to be the same as what you had in Ronan wallet. And we'll say import. And then we'll say done. And now you can actually see it has automatically just scanned the wallet and found some of the tokens that I sent there. And we can also see if we open up Ronan wallet, we now have the same address over here on the right that we have over here on the left in MetaMask. Now, while we're talking about seed phrases, it's worth saying if you don't have your seed phrase written down securely offline, so on paper, you need to pause this video and write down that backup right now. The number of people who I see who have lost either all or part of their seed phrase and lost all of their funds, uh, particularly a lot of newbies who are coming into this whole Ronin wallet space is unbelievable. So don't be one of those people, back up your seed phrase, keep it secure and keep it offline. If you haven't done it, do it now. If you're using a Trezor and you have that Trezor in uh, the Ronin wallet, if you go and import that same Trezor into MetaMask, you'll actually get the equivalent address on the Ethereum chain that you had in Ronin wallet and all of your funds will be there. So if you're using a hardware wallet, you can skip all of the stuff with seeds and just use your existing MetaMask and it won't muck anything else up. This is a really good point to mention that if you don't have a hardware wallet and you are storing more than a couple of hundred dollars worth of currency in your soft wallet, whether it's Ronin wallet or MetaMask, it is really worth getting a hardware wallet like a Trezor. Uh, they help to boost your security in a massive amount of ways so that one piece of malware can't just wipe out uh, all of the currencies you have stored in your wallet. And they also make it much easier to securely recover from making this kind of mistake. If you think that a hardware wallet would be good to boost your security and you wanna help me out in the process, there's an affiliate link in the description. So for these tokens that are on the Ethereum chain, you've got two options. Firstly, you can just send them straight back to Binance and do it that way uh, to use the uh, Ronin bridge. One thing I should say is if you only have AXS tokens on your address here, you will need to deposit some Ethereum to pay for the transaction fees. So basically we're just gonna go to bridge.ronanchain.com. So basically we're just gonna wanna say deposit and then MetaMask will pop up here. 
and this is the account that we just imported into MetaMask are the same ones that were originally from our Ronin wallet and we'll just say next and we'll say connect. And basically what we can do here is we can send this to the Ronin address from our Ronin wallet, which is actually gonna be the same address uh, that is on the Ethereum network, except in this case, it starts with the Ronin prefix. So we'll just choose that we wanna move the AXS tokens over. We'll say max. And we'll just say next. There we go, we'll just confirm that. And then when we do that, this transaction will pop up. Oh, didn't like that because that pop-up was there. Got rid of that pop-up and now we can see the little one has come. There we go. Now the thing is that the gas fees on the Ronin chain bridge might actually be quite high, particularly depending on when you do this. And uh, depending on where you are in the world, and also depending on what the withdrawal fees will be for Binance at the time, it might actually be cheaper just to send the funds back to Binance.com and withdraw them from there on the network you want. You'll have to work out whether that's worthwhile or even if that's possible depending on where in the world you live. So in this instance, I'll just say reject and I'm gonna go back to Binance and I'll just deposit the AXS. I'll select that I wanna do it on the Ethereum chain. You can double check if you want that it is the right smart contract. You can just do that by clicking view on Etherscan and then click on the, select the token from the drop down, then select AXS and you'll see that this smart contract here ends with the same thing that Binance is telling us. So we can say, okay. And basically I can then just send this AXS token to that address. And there's the transaction there. We can see that the, the network fees are still gonna be quite high at the moment, but that's sort of unavoidable. And I'll just say confirm. There we go. So that transaction is done. And we can actually see that even though it said the gas fees could be up to $25, it was actually only 15. And uh, look, I'll just send the Ethereum back as well. And there we go. And if we wanna find the funds that were at the address on Binance Smart Chain, the quickest and easiest way to configure the wallet is just to go to bscscan.com uh, to scroll down and just to click add BSC network. And then we'll get a pop-up here in MetaMask that will just have all of the information that we can confirm for the Binance Smart Chain. And we can say approve and we'll say switch network to. And now if we go back over here into MetaMask, uh, there is no BNB, but if we click and view that in an explorer, we can actually see the SLP is there. And we just run through the process of adding a smart contract for the SLP token and adding that into MetaMask here. Just say next. This is actually just the same process that I recover in my video for recovering from Binance Smart Chain. In terms of recovering the funds from Binance Smart Chain, the process is pretty much the same, except you'll find that if you go to use the Ronin Bridge, it will actually tell you that the network is the wrong one. So the Ronin Bridge will only work with the Ethereum network. So if you have sent the funds to the Binance Smart Chain, you'll need to just send them back to Binance. In this instance as well, you'll notice I have a balance of zero BNB. So I'll actually have to deposit some BNB to pay for the gas fees before I can send this SLP back to Binance. So I'll just do that now. So I just sent 0 0.01, that'll be heaps. So we'll just deposit the SLP into Binance. We'll select the smart chain and we'll just send it that way. To recover the SLP that we sent to MetaMask, the process is basically gonna be the same. So basically we'll just install the Ronin wallet in our secondary browser, which again, we're just gonna use Chrome, same as before. Making sure we're installing the right app. Basically what we can do then is we can say, get started. We'll say, I already have my secret recovery phrase and the recovery phrase we're gonna use here is going to be the one from our MetaMask wallet. So we'll just go into settings, go into security and privacy, 
and click reveal secret recovery phrase. Basically, we'll just copy that, we'll paste it over here, and we'll give the wallet a password. That password could be anything. And we'll say import wallet. And there we go. So now what we have is an installation of the Ronan wallet with the equivalent address to what we had in MetaMask. And if we scroll down, we can see that the SLP is there. So we can then just send these funds either back to Binance or in this instance, we can actually just send it to our actual proper Ronan wallet. So we'll copy the address from there. We'll paste it in there and we'll say max next. And if you get to a point where it says that you don't have transaction fees, so we'll just cancel that. To pay for the transaction fees, basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna to go to the marketplace, marketplace.axieinfinity.com. We're gonna click log in with Ronan wallet. That'll pop this up, which is from this Ronan wallet, not that one. We'll say confirm. We'll just stick with the default name. Now, you don't actually need to worry about any of the other accounts set up. We just needed to log in once so it could give us the uh, free transaction quota we need. And now, if we go in and go to send to our proper wallet, send SLP and say max and then say next. We can now send that transaction. So we'll just say confirm. There we go. And now if we look over here in our proper wallet, we can see that the tokens that we sent have arrived. So there you go. As you can see, most of the recoveries for recovering from sending the funds to the wrong chain or the wrong wallet with all of these sort of Ronan wallets and stuff are pretty straightforward. The key thing to understand from all of these examples is they are all examples where you control the private keys for the account. If you've done something like send the funds to an exchange on the wrong chain, you know, in that situation, all you can do is ask their support and hope that they will help you. Give it a go yourself. If you have any questions or queries or get stuck along the way, you know, just leave a comment. I do my best to reply to all of them. And if you get totally, totally stuck, there's information on my website that you can use that runs through how to request a uh, private session so we can just sort of work through it over a video call. Thanks for watching. I hope that was helpful. Hit like if you think that other people would find this video useful and hit subscribe if you'd like to be kept in the loop about future content I make that helps people stay safe in the crypto space and to recover if they get into trouble. If you have any questions about this video or a topic that you'd like me to cover, just leave a reply.